Welcome to this tutorial about recording meetings pages with Scarlets and Blues, or minutes pages rather. Um, so minutes pages are part of the meetings workflow. So I shall click on that button to begin. And that will bring up um, all the pages that you can see. So these have been organized into what we call subject sets um, by quarter of year. Um, so Q1, quarter one is January to March, Q2 is April to June, Q3 is July to September, and Q4 is October to December. Um, and you can see we start from the second half of 1908 and we finish down here at the end of 1919. So the records cover the First World War from 1914 to 1918, but also before and after. Um, so the page I want to show is from the 24th of February 1916. So that will be in this subject set here. Now this will bring up an index. Um, and I will just talk through these columns. So the status tells you um, if it needs transcribing basically. Um, if it says available, then it's available for you to transcribe. It might also say already seen, which means you have already transcribed it, or it might say retired, which means enough people have transcribed it that we do not need any more transcriptions. Um, but you're still able to go in and look at the page if that's something that you want to do. Um, date is the date of the meeting. Um, this is organized page by page, so you will tend to see runs of the same date. Uh, the first entry on any given date should be an attendance page and the others should be minutes pages. Um, catalogue reference is how you look the record up in the National Archives catalogue. Um, at present the catalogue only goes to two levels, um, so if you wanted to look up these pages you would want to look for WO250-436. This third level is identifying the meeting in the in the book. So this would be, we start from two, so this would be the 11th meeting in the book. Um, but this level doesn't exist yet in our catalogue, it will be an output from this project. Um, and the subject ID, you don't need to worry about what the number means, but you click on this to bring up the page. Uh, you can sort by these columns. Um, so if I click on that twice, I've got reverse page sorting. Uh, and you can filter. So I'm going to filter my date. My meeting was 24 Feb. So if I just do 24, there we go. Um, and the page I wanted to look at was actually page 67, which is this one. So I shall click on this. And there we are, page 67. Okay, so the first question is, is it an attendance page or a minutes page? Well, the answer is that it is a minutes page. Um, attendance pages look quite distinctive and they've got sort of a big heading across here and then a list of attendees down here. Um, minutes pages just have these agenda items sort of laid out on them and, and the title and dates up in the corner there. So this is a minutes page. So the next question is that are there any tables? Tables are a bit fiddly so we try to get them transcribed first. Um, I, many, uh, many, many minutes pages don't have any tables. This one has two things that I would say look like a table. And there's this up here and this down here. Um, now, actually, because tables are a bit fiddly, we ask if you can just transcribe it as normal text, then do that. Don't treat it as a table. Um, so this one, this one is basically just normal text. There's no column heading here to associate these values with. It doesn't have its own title. So I would say just transcribe that as part of the minute, uh, agenda item, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this one though, this one's got column headings, so I, we, need, um, we need to know that Mrs. A.B. Blair is a name, and we need to know 27th January 1916 is when she resigned. So for this sort of more structured information, this is where we need to treat it as a table. Uh, which is a long-winded way of saying that the answer is yes, there is at least one table to transcribe, but we will only be transcribing one. Now, the number of the item. Now, this page is a little bit unusual. That's why I chose it. Um, normally, there's just a fairly straightforward number and an agenda item. So this is 10, and then maybe this would be 11, and this would be 12. Um, but every once in a while, you'll see a minute that's sort of broken into subparts. So we can see that there are three separate items here because we can th see three separate resolutions. Um, 
and we can see that each one is headed by a, a number in Roman numerals there, so one, two, and three. Um, so this is actually sort of a, an agenda item with sub items inside it, and the way we deal with that, uh, excuse me, I appear to have accidentally copied something there. The way we deal with that is um, put in the agenda item number as normal, and then a dot, and then we indicate which sub item we're on. So I've just put an I there for the Roman numeral one. Then Sorry, the table isn't there, the table's in two. So I need to put II for two. Title of table, this table does not have a title. Column headings are name, and then we put a comma so that we can distinguish between the columns. And then appointed, and again, the comma to say we're on a new column and then resigned. And then we transcribe the table row by row. I'm going to do this fairly quickly, so please don't take this as a guide to reading the writing. Um, normally I would do this more slowly and carefully. So that's Mrs. A.B. Blair, 26th June 1915, uh, and she resigns 27 January 1916. Now I can make this a bit bigger. It just makes it a bit easier for me to read what I've done. And you can see again, I've used commas to separate things so that the name will go with name, the appointment date will go with appointed, and the resignation date will go with resigned. And then when I get to the end of a row, I press enter. Now I go Miss EC Hill. Now I think that's EC. We've actually got a resource in here to help a bit with capital letters. Uh, there it is, examples of capital letters. Um, so if I drag this out, I should be able to find some example E's. There we go. I'm fairly sure it's an E, but not 100%. So I'm going to use double brackets. So if we're not sure about something, you can put it in double brackets. And that just says, I'm not sure. If you've got no idea what it is at all, you can put dot, dot, dot. But if you've got a pretty good guess, then you can put that in. So I'm fairly sure that's an E. Um, Miss E.C. Hill, comma, 3 February 1916, and resigns 11 February 1916. I need to make that a little bit wider just to make it easy for me to see where the rows are. And then that is Mrs. Uh, now that letter there looks rather like a J to me, but I know it's an F because I can see it's the same letter that begins February. So I'm going to put this as F, Dallas, Askew, Askew, uh, 2nd February 1916, 17th February 1916. Um, and then I just sort of look back over that. I think I've got everything right. I've got my commas separating the columns. So I'm done with that table. I can press next. Then I'll get asked, is there another table? So as I've explained, we don't want to treat this as a table. Um, so I say, no, I'm ready to transcribe the agenda items. Okay, so now we'll work through the items one by one. So the first one is 10.i. Uh, the title is this here, so Secretary's Office Changes in Clerical Stuff. So I'm making sure I include the line breaks. I'm not worried about catching things like spaces at the start of the line. But it's important for us to catch the line breaks as well. Um, and you can see this has um, been highlighted by my spell checker, but that's fine. Um, I could make that go away by putting an apostrophe here, but I'm pretty sure there's not an apostrophe in the original, and it's the text, the original text I really want to capture. And I've accidentally pasted that there, so let's get rid of that. I'm actually going to copy that whole title, because I'm going to need it again. Okay, so agenda item text, I don't need to put the I, I've recorded that up here. Uh, so again, it's important to... Um, copy exactly what it says on the page. So we put the line breaks on the end. Try not to commit typos that aren't in the original text. We've joined for temporary duty 
as women clerks in the secretary's office on the dates stated against their names. I'm going to make this bigger so I can see it. Okay, and then Miss E. Mackay, maybe Mackey, and then I'll just put a space and then January 1916. Um, where we have ditto marks like this, you can also put a ditto mark. In fact, should also put a ditto mark. Um, so there's that uncertain E again. So that's Miss E.G. Fisher. Uh, 28. And then this is also a ditto mark. And when you see this ditto mark, you can just put the same thing. The, the, the same things before the modern ditto mark. Um, and then we work down the list. Now, if I was doing this for real, I would have to copy out the whole thing because it's important that we copy out the whole page. Otherwise, we're going to end up with holes in our records. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to stop here so you don't have to watch me type out that whole list. Uh, resolution is the stuff in the right-hand column. So it's just reported. And then subject, this is a bit subjective, but you just choose from this list whichever title, label you think best suits or what the agenda item is about. Um, this one's about stuff. Yeah. So uh, we say next. Then we're asked, is there another agenda item to transcribe? There is another one. So we say yes. Um, so the next one will be 10.ii. The title, um, normally each one would have its own title, um, which would be underlined at the top. But because these are kind of sub items, they're all sharing the same title, so we just put it in again. That's why I copied it earlier. And then the text is the following temporary women clerks resigned their appointments on the dates stated against their names. Uh, and I've missed a line break there, I think, haven't I? Yeah. Another accidental paste, sorry about that. There we go. And then I stop there because I've already transcribed this table. So I move on to the resolution, which just says resignations accepted. And the subject, I would say, is still staffing. Yes, there's one more item to transcribe, and that will be 10.3 or III. Same title. Mrs. A. L. Dawson. Um, now I'm not sure if this is a full stop or a hyphen or a dash, um, but we're actually much more concerned about the letters and the text and the line breaks than we are about punctuation and symbols. So I'm just going to put a hyphen and not worry about it. So Mrs. A. L. Dawson, temporary woman clerk, appointed January 1916, was discharged on 22 February. 1916, her services being no longer required. I'm just going to open that up and look back over it. I can see the spell check is picking me up. And indeed, that should be a capital J because it isn't the original. And they did spell discharged correctly. Okay. And that's it. That's now correct. And the resolution is discharge comma. Confirmed. Excuse my typing. And the subject, now discharge catches my eye here, but I think that's more for um, medical discharges. Um, and the other two items were staffing, so I'm going to stick with staffing. And then press next. That was the last agenda item. So I press no, and these buttons light up. So I can press done if I'm finished, or if I want to tag something interesting in this page or tell people about something in this page or ask a question about it i can hit done and talk and that will take me to the talk pages and i can type what i like about the page over there uh, including hashtags if i want i shall just quickly also show you that we have um just returned to the issue of what counts as a table we've got some guidance about that in here 
um, and it might be worth just quickly talking about the table examples. So here are a few table examples. The top one is similar to what you've already seen. And then if I scroll down a bit, this is something you might see here and there. Um, so we've got two columns, um, but really the second column is just a continuation of the first column. It could just as well have been written going straight down underneath it. And what we want with tables like this is to transcribe this as if it had been written in one long column. So we transcribe bacon and then and, and the price, and then barley and the price, cocoa and the price, coffee and the price, and so on, until we get to the bottom of the left column. Then we start transcribing the right column. Um, but in this text box where we're, where we're writing everything down, we just go on to a new row. So we transcribe the right column. The, the, the piece at the top of the right column will be on the next row after whatever's at the bottom of this column. Um, so the point is that it has to come out um, as if this table had been written as a single column. Um, I hope that makes sense. Um, this next one, this is an example of a table that is too complex to transcribe. Um, with tables like these, uh, you still need to say that there's a table there so that we're aware of it. Um, and then just give us as much information as you can manage. So it might just be the minute number that it's in. Um, in this case, we can get the title out here and we can get these column headings out here. But then after that, it gets a bit tricky trying to figure out do we want to get this pound shillings and pence in and what do we do with this footnote? Um, so the rows have been left blank here and that's to signal to us this table's too complicated to transcribe. Um, and then we can go and just sort that out for ourselves. And then this last case, this isn't exactly a table, but it is structured information. And this would be impossible to record as a normal minute uh, because we haven't got any way of dealing with these um, curly brackets and what they mean. Um, so tables can be a good way to record this sort of information as well. Uh, if I scroll down a bit here. Um, so you can see uh, we've just treated this as though every line said mutton chops, Mrs. P. Mason and all the rest of that, and then the price and then beefsteaks and Mrs. P. Mason and all of that, and then the price. Um, so we're handling this much like we would in the people workflow. Um, so that's that's just another use of tables to capture that kind of structured information. And then one final thing to show you, um, which you will already have seen if you've looked at the attendance workflow, is this page. So as I said, attendance pages are quite distinctive with this title and this attendance list. Um, but they normally have a set of minutes down here, which you will soon become familiar with. Um, this one is a bit different. It looks kind of like a meetings page. It's not really. It's still an attendance page and you should still transcribe it using that workflow. And the video on um, attendance pages talks a little about that. Uh, and that is everything I wanted to say about minutes workflows. Thank you for listening.